Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. Uh, we've got Dr. Rolo on the phone, so we want to go directly over to her. Uh, Dr. Rolo, I, we, since the last time we both talked, we've both had coronavirus, uh, but you've had it more <laughs> recently. How, how have you been? You I'm great. I, yes, yesterday was my first day back at work, oh. and it felt so good to be back to, at work face-to-face with everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you had a very light case. I guess you had a very light case. Compared to many, many people, yes, it definitely was light. I had about eight straight days of fever, so that was a challenge. Um, I think the hardest part was isolating myself in my own home away from the rest of my family. Uh, I I had to do the same thing. Uh, Yeah, I had two days of fever, so I guess I can't say too much, but... uh, I just lost my sense of smell for a good week, and uh, but I had to isolate myself from my wife and my kids for ten days, and uh, that was probably the hardest part. I agree. It's it's very difficult when you live in the same house to yes. separate yourself from everybody. And then my wife, of course, she was having to sleep in one of the rooms with the kids because uh, I I had the master bedroom so that I have a bathroom with it, and uh, so that I didn't have to get out to do anything at all. And it was yeah. just, uh, it it was a mess, and that's, uh, it's rough. So, uh, <laughs> it is, but I'm, it is rough. I will agree with you on that. It, it's 100%. Well, it's good to be on this side uh, of it, though, right? Hey, Dr. It, Rolo? It is. It is. I know there's still a lot we don't know as far as antibodies, but it does feel good to be on this side of it. And um, it definitely gives me some empathy for those who have, you know, are going through it or have gone through it. So, definitely. And so, uh, you've got some immunity to it also, I suppose. Well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. definitely got to be one of the benefits of this, is having well, some immunity at least. Of course, it's, it's, hard, to, it's, hard, to talk, it's <laughs> hard to talk about anything without talking about the coronavirus. So uh, let's do ask about how many of your staff are sick and out right now. I, say I don't have an exact number of staff who actually are out at this moment, and that number changes obviously by the hour. Um, We have 129 active cases total, and that is staff and students, which that number has decreased. So we're pleased with that. That is 0.42% of all of our staff and students. Um, Before the holiday, we were actually seeing more students developing um, the virus than staff members. Um, And so that trend... um, did continue through yesterday's reporting, but our numbers are actually down a little bit right now, which we are grateful for. So, yeah, are you well, worried- how, how about uh, how about a, are you con- worried about a, a surge after uh, this Thanksgiving holidays? I guess it would take what a week, ten days or so before it shows up. I mean, if you watch the national news, you know everybody is is concerned about that. So we will definitely be watching those numbers. Anecdotally, I really feel like a lot of our people did the right thing and um, stayed in small groups. And so we're hoping that week apart might actually help us um, continue our better trend in numbers than um, if, you know, it's hard to say right now, but so how, we'll watch it. How are you, uh, what, what, what's the, uh, the rules there? I know that every employer seems to have a little bit different Um how how does one of the, your your teachers uh, come back to school? Is there just a time period? Do they have to get retested? Um, you know uh, how how does that process work? You do not have to get retested. Um, on our webpage, we have a return to work um, flowchart that shows people who have been diagnosed with coronavirus what the steps are before they may return. It is a ten day minimum. Um, before they are allowed to return, the only way they can come back sooner is if they do get that negative test. Yeah, I know that when yeah. I called them after I had um, after my ten days was up, you know, and, and I only, like I said, I only had fever for a few days out of that, so um, all of my symptoms had been gone for you know four or five days by the time uh, my ten days was up. But the big thing was that they didn't want to retest me. They were they, they literally said they they do not want to retest me. That it's a waste of of uh, tests and so, yeah. and so yeah. they, they fought me on that uh, pretty hard 
That's interesting. Yeah. We do have some tests, rapid tests available for staff and students only. And so we have enough to be able to test all staff on a weekly basis if they want to. Um, so they are signing up for those tests. And so if, if one of our staff members tests positive and goes through the 10 days and feels better and is ready to return, um, we are certainly open to testing them. So I, I don't know that this is something um... – I, I don't think it was on the list, so uh, it, I don't even know if <laughs> okay. y'all if y'all have anything set up. But I know that the city today is talking about its uh, agenda with the upcoming session. Um, uh-huh. Does does LISD have or Lubbock ISD have an, uh, in mind what what they're going to be fighting for in the upcoming session? We do. State? We actually do, and we are. Um... The biggest thing is to continue to support what came out of House Bill 3. Um, That was one of the biggest uh, positive moves for public education that we've had in decades. And being able to sustain that is so very, very important. So that is our number one legislative priority is to continue to sustain what was outlined in House Bill 3. Has the state said anything at all about uh, funding uh, with with, – I guess with the oil field being down right now, as well as coronavirus, has the state said anything about what they're going to do about funding? Well, of course, we have a weekly call with the Commissioner of Education, and he is he is saying to plan for cuts. So yeah. we we are anticipating that. That's what I was definitely. worried about. Yeah. Yeah, we are, uh, too. Doctor, we are, too. Dr. Rolo, can I get a question in here? We have, yes, of we course. Have a, we have a, a texture this morning. It says, see if you can find out what the pay is for substitute teachers from Dr. Rolla. Oh, I wish I knew off the top of my head, and I should, but I don't. But I can certainly um, direct you to our website and to our Human Resources Department. If anyone wants to call our Human Resources Department, we just raised the pay for retired teachers and anyone who has a college degree. And so we definitely have a, a substitute shortage right now, and so we are hoping that a little bit of, of pay increase will help. But if you will call our Human Resources Department, we will gladly get you those numbers. I apologize for not knowing those off the top of my head. Yeah. I, hey, uh, and the substitute shortage, um, I mean, I'm sure that y'all, y'all take as much as y'all can, um, but I, it's uh, – uh, it's difficult because with teachers coming in and out, y- y'all are running into uh, – how how do you deal with that at the school? Are y'all having to move kids around at all, or is everything still yes. going as normal? It's been a challenge. Um, of course, we really appreciate it when our subs accept the jobs and come and take the jobs, and that really helps us tremendously. Um, and we probably have about the same number of subs who are taking positions as we have in the past. Um, maybe a few less just because some of our substitutes are – older citizens and they're a little bit more vulnerable and afraid and i I totally understand that um but we are having to our secondary teachers we're paying them if they use their conference period to cover a class um teachers are using conference periods to cover each other's classes and help each other out it's been a very very challenging year with regard to that so please please whatever you do please show gratitude to our teachers this has been the hardest year in education in my 32 years for sure. So please yeah, tell them how much you appreciate the hard work they, well, they're doing hey, right now. A qu- another, another quick question, Dr. Rollo, before we take the, the 7 uh, 15 break. The, the, the texture wants to know will you take the vaccine? Well, the vaccine? Well, right now I have antibodies. And so I would not want to take a vaccine away from somebody who needs it. But when it's ready and approved and in the future when my antibodies are gone, um, absolutely. Absolutely. I would take the vaccine. Yeah. All right. Well, we do have to take a quick break. Uh, we're talking with the superintendent of Lubbock ISD, Dr. Rolo, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We are joined by uh, Dr. Rolo, the superintendent of Lubbock ISD. And uh, Dr. Rolo, there, uh, one of the questions that I was wondering uh, that has to do with uh, the COVID-19, I know that you have a lot of students that are doing um, at home learning, or uh, I guess it's called distance learning. Uh, have you had? I know that a lot of the schools around Lubbock have not uh, have gotten rid of their distance learning. Have you had a lot of kids enroll in Lubbock's distance learning after they were 
had to lose the one that they were in at their school? Did we lose Dr. Rillo? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm that's fine. You. I apologize. No, that's fine. Um, you think I would have that down by this point in time. Um, we've had probably about 40 students enroll from around the, the Lubbock area from districts who've shut down their virtual schools. Have you had any problems at all with y'all's virtual school? I know that uh, a lot of the districts were having problems with kids not uh, or students not attending the classes. Yes, I, I, to be perfectly honest, yes, we have. We have a large number of students who have not been participating in class like they should virtually. Um, the progress reports and report cards that went out helped a little bit with that because I think parents thought the students were doing the work, but they weren't. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm talking primarily about secondary students. Yeah. Um, so that did help some. We turned off the students' Chromebooks that they had not logged on and, and participated in class, and that helped as well to get to kind of wake students up to, I really need to get this work done. Um, we have really um, had a huge effort to get kids back in school face-to-face. -face. We know that's a better learning environment for the majority of our students. So um, our numbers overall in virtual school have decreased, and our face-to-face -face numbers have increased over time. Okay. And another uh, question that was brought up uh, is about games in Lubbock. I know that uh, have you had any um, you all had have you all had to cancel games and uh, what what's the protocol moving forward for the the games football and uh, otherwise basketball and whatnot? Yeah, so we actually have had to suspend some of our teams for a couple of weeks when we've had a, a larger number of students and or coaches test positive, and we've worked very closely with Catherine Wells and the City of Lubbock Health Department to make those decisions. Um, as far as the protocols for those games, when they are happening, when the, when the team is well, um, we are allowing each athlete to have two spectators. Um, we are requiring masks, and we are having them socially distant in the venue as best as possible. So it's a pretty strict protocol. Um, we have had some People who are upset that they can't bring the entire family to watch the, the student play, but we've just got to make sure that we can maintain that social distance environment and keep everyone safe. Do you have any, like, distance watching, like, a way for them to watch uh, a football game from distance? I know that it's on the radio, uh, a lot um, of actually, your games. The vast majority of our football games this year have been televised. Okay. So we are very grateful um, for Raymar for helping us make that happen. Yeah. All right. Um, so what's, uh, what's the focus moving forward um, as we're looking towards Christmas? Well, you know, right now we're really taking it one day at a time, um, one step in front of the other. Um, we have a three-week period now between Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's really important. I know people are, are tired, and, and so we can't let our guard down. We've got to continue to use those safety protocols. And, and we have to continue to make sure that our students are learning every day. And so um, this three-week window is an important one for learning. So we're just um, day by day, keep staying focused and, and hang in there because we have a two-week break coming up. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say one of the things that I've been reading online, and I know that has more to do with uh, those that are either doing distance learning or and have shut down the schools uh, in other states, but is okay. that um, some of the stu that students are getting behind, uh, and when you know they're worried about next year having to bring them back up. Uh, are we having any of that problems? I guess in the state of Texas, or specifically in Lubbock, uh, where students are getting behind, and, and we're focused on how to get them back back where they need to be once COVID-19 is over? Yes, most definitely. Um, I think Texas is probably in better shape because more schools did open face-to-face. -face. Um, but, you know, we always have the summer slide, and I've actually talked about that on your show before in previous mm -hmm. years, where kids uh, lose a little bit of academic ground in the summer. This is the COVID cliff. Um, and, and from the assessments that we've been able to give thus far, we can tell that our kids – uh, not all of them, but a, a good majority of them definitely have gaps that we've got to fill, and we're working very hard to fill those. Okay, and I don't know if the state's done it yet, but uh, there are uh, people that are asking for the assessment tests to be dropped. Is that something that's, th that you think is important, or do you think we should have those? I do not think the assessment itself should be dropped at all. We need that information. We need that data because that helps us identify where kids have gaps. 
It helps us identify where schools possibly have gaps. Um, as far as accountability, I, that is going to have to look different just because of the differences in virtual versus face-to-face -face school. Um, we don't have a growth measure because we didn't have STAR last year, and that's a big part of the accountability system. So I think as far as the test itself, we need that assessment desperately. But as far as how it's used in accountability, that's going to have to be reconsidered. Yeah, and we only have about 20 seconds, but you definitely don't want to be, I guess you don't want to be shutting schools down at, at the end of this year after a COVID year. That's definitely something that state no, needs to look no. at. That's uh, number one goal. Keep schools open and keep kids in school as long as possible. All right, Dr. Rolla, thank you so much for coming on. Um, we will talk to you again here soon.